Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today, we're covering an interview that Anthony Noto did with Wharton Magazine. So uh, this is actually the school that he ended up going to. So he actually gave them some time. And it was quite a very long uh, piece on Anthony Noto, SoFi, the beginning of his career, and everything that sort of led to where SoFi is today. Now, a lot of the questions that they ended up asking were before SoFi Day's early career introduction type stuff. I wanted to cut that out and give you guys, you know, for, for the people that have not as much time to go through their SoFi content, just really the main pieces of the article, which were four questions that were answered that we're going to be practically reading out in full. Okay. They asked, uh, so far, I went public in 2021. Was scale the biggest challenge uh, to the road to that IPO, which was actually a SPAC? Uh, naming rights for the SoFi Stadium. What, uh, you know, SoFi's position is on AI. And then where will SoFi be over the next five years? And Anthony Note actually takes that as far as five to 10 years. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. The interviewer asked SoFi went public in 2021. Was scale the biggest challenge on the road to that IPO? And Anthony said, there were a multitude of challenges. There was a governance challenge, a capitalization challenge. There was an evolution challenge. We were growing quite rapidly, and we had to hire a massive amount of people to build out those products. Then we had to build the brand. But what turned out to be the hardest was convincing people to hand over their $2.9 billion of preferred equity in exchange for common stock. Now, how to navigate the re regulatory environment and get a bank license while well, the administration switched from Republican to Democrat. And then when uh, COVID happened, our first largest and most profitable product basically got put out of business when the president said, if you have student loans, you don't have to pay them. We never really uh, have been in an environment where the weather has been perfect. And hopefully we're about to enter that time period, but we've still done incredibly well. When I joined in 2018, we generated about $250 million in revenue with 600,000 members. And by the end of 2024, we expect to generate close to $2.5 billion in revenue with nearly 10 million members. I was talking to the team yesterday and someone was explaining a problem that we had and was complaining a little bit. And I said, you like hard. You wouldn't be here if you didn't like hard. So stop complaining. Just goes to show you the type of management that uh, Anthony Noto has, right? And it's actually very good for the company. But going on, the next big question was, how critical was the naming rights deal for SoFi Stadium? And he said, I've said that for us to truly be successful, we need to have people trust us. And the best measure of trust is unaided brand awareness. SoFi Stadium was 100% about becoming a household name. Getting our native brand awareness to 20 to 30% instead of just 2%. At 20 to 30%, we'll be a top 10 financial institution in the United States. The variables I had in this equation of success were capital, regulatory, and great product. But the fourth variable is building trust. Our whole marketing effort over the last seven years was about that last variable. So we've been up about four times since then, where we're only about halfway to where we need to actually get to. They've made mentions to say that they've been anywhere between 9 and 11% lately. So uh, I guess it's still holding up to that as of the time of this interview as well. I assume you're all in on the potential for artificial intelligence. How has that technology informed this business? And what impact do you see having this on SoFi and fintech moving forward? So he goes a little off the beaten path with this question, but essentially, uh, you know, he said AI is everything that it's promised to be. And we try to answer three questions every single day whenever you come to SoFi. What must you do today? What should you do? And what can you do? Generative AI will allow you to generate those answers to those questions based on all the information that we have with all the products you use, but also based off the other 8 million plus members or 12 million products. And this is the most surprising thing. He said, or 150 million accounts with data to train those models on. He's talking about Galileo. So he's saying, you know, Galileo is our data moat right now, and this is actually going to better inform SoFi's uh, AIs to give you more personalization than any one of those companies that does not have this sort of third-party access into all these other fintechs and banks. So that's incredibly hard to do without artificial intelligence. Perfect. And lastly, he said, where do you see the financial services industry in SoFi heading over the last or over the next five years? You'll see more safety and security, more iteration and innovation, 
SoFi is on the path to be the winner that takes most in this transition of the financial services industry to be a digital leader. As it relates to this industry, for the first time in the history of banking, we're on the precipice of being able to force big incumbent banks to innovate. Why? Because until now, they haven't had to. They haven't faced disruptive competitive forces. Companies like SoFi, Robinhood, and Affirm are starting to reach the scale where incumbents are going to have to have a come-to-Jesus moment. They'll have to decide whether they want to actually become innovators and fight or just let the ice cube continue to melt. My hope is that more incumbent financial leaders stand and fight versus hanging up their gloves. The next five to 10 years will bring profound change in financial services, and nothing would impact our people, our way of life, and our country more than instability and unreliability in this industry. Very, very interesting insight from Anthony Noda here. Quick video. I love this data moat thing that they're talking about with Galileo. It's very interesting. It's always been top of mind whether they can actually use this data or how much they're collecting. It's definitely something that's on Anthony Noto's mind. SoFi Stadium doing extremely well, exactly what it should be doing. And we're going to get that innovation and iteration, but mainly it's that safety and security that Anthony Noto is continuously talking about because they really do see themselves as a top five bank and you're going to need that trust and not act like some of these fintechs that do rent to charters or some of these you know, third-party uh, banking as a service providers that end up going into bankruptcy, right? SoFi is taking a little bit slower, but perfect methodical approach to growing the way that they should be. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this sort of video, just hit the subscribe down below. That's all I ask. Check out the sponsors of the video, Moomoo, if you guys are looking for a place to do some trading and graduate from some of these brokerages that might not have all the tools that you need. Just go to futureinvesting.pro slash Moomoo, find all the details there. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.